Hello again. I'm sure that many viewers must have seen the articles which are cropping up in newspapers and on the internet, the ones which bemoan the fact that so few black people and other ethnic minorities visit the countryside or use our national parks for recreation. Since I spent most of yesterday in the countryside of a national park, and what's more encountered some black people and ethnic minorities there, I thought I'd say a few words on the subject. Where I am currently is within the Brecon Beacons National Park, and there are a number of good mountains within walking distance of the house, including Penavan, which is about 3,000 feet high. I am a great one for mountains, and so yesterday <coughs> I went up Cribbin, which is a peak about an hour and a half walk from here, and then also went up Penavan. I don't know what that is in miles, but it came to 26,000 steps, according to my pedometer, and something over 3,000 feet in height climbed in total. During the course of this time, I came across seven people who were obviously not white British, and it's interesting to see what the reality is, rather than what one reads in the papers. In the description to this video, I give a link to an article which complains that the countryside is white and not welcoming to black and brown people. I don't pretend to understand all the opinions expressed there. One passage reads, for example, Negative encounters in rural spaces, coupled with homogenous messaging in the media and advertising, can cause certain myths about nature to be internalised. I have no idea what is meant by this. But other parts of the piece were pretty clear and made me laugh out loud. Listen to this. Nigerian-born Enoch Adeyemi, co-founder of Black Scottish Adventurers, recently shared his experiences of hiking with a large group of black men, revealing that they are constantly subject to spurious complaints about littering, condescension and demands to stop playing music. Why should I turn off my music? Just because white Scottish people enjoy nature one way, that doesn't mean black people have to enjoy it exactly the same way. Yeah, I think some of us could already see the problem there. It's not really racism. Forget the skin colour for a moment. Like many people, I go to the countryside and wild surroundings to escape the noise of the city and so that I can see birds and other wildlife. I value the silence. If I encountered a large group of men playing music on their phones or something, I would probably react in a negative fashion too. Asking people to turn off their music if you're on a peaceful mountain inside is hardly racism. But back to my own experiences yesterday. I came across four Nepalese, all men. They seem to like the mountains, but they simply walk up and down them like everybody else. We nodded and greeted each other briefly, but that was the limit of it. They evidently do not feel excluded at all from the National Park. There's quite a few Nepalese living in the town, and nobody cares in the least. They simply behave like everybody else, and I cannot really think they are subjected to any racial prejudice. They're indistinguishable from other people. Move to one side politely on the pavement if you're approaching, smile, greet one in the morning, and generally behave like British people. Once I reached the top of Penavan, I found a couple of dozen people who had come up the easy way by parking at the Story Arms and walking up a gentle path to the summit. That's the way that I first uh, went up myself when we had small children with us. It's quite a nice walk to get to the top. These various people, you know, some families, some individuals, milled around eating lunch and taking pictures. Most of these people were white, but there were also a couple of Igbo guys. How do I know they were Igbo? Simply because I can recognise Igbo being spoken. Forty years ago, I used to go to evening classes in Igbo, uh, they were run by the GLC, by uh, my friend's cousin. Those were the days in, uh, when you could learn all sorts of things for nothing in London. This was at the Woodbury Down School, the classes were held. 
I used to knock around with a few Ebo men at that time, and I thought it worth learning at least a few phrases. Fun fact, Colonel Le Dukwu, the Biafran leader who lived in exile, ended his days in the London borough of Hackney, where I used to see him about. Anyway, I can still identify Ebo when I hear it, and that's what the two men at the top of Vanavan were speaking. I didn't detect any hostility towards them from the white people. Not, I hasten to add, that they would have cared in any case. The Ebo are very proud people. They put me in mind a bit of the Sikhs. They, I don't think they'd be bothered if they thought that others disliked them because of their skin colour. Walking down from Penavan via the path north to Brecon, I met a few people going up, including a single black woman. Like everybody else, she nodded and smiled when we passed. I think the moral here is that if you behave like everybody else and just go about your business quietly and politely, nobody in the countryside or on a mountain is going to care in the least what colour you are. Of course, if yesterday I had come across a large group of people playing music, then I would have given them a wide berth and possibly have cast a reproachful look at them for disturbing the peace and quiet which I was enjoying. Had they been black, then I dare say this would have been interpreted as racism and noted down as one of those negative encounters that black people report in the countryside. I don't believe there's any prejudice about race or colour in the national parks or the countryside in general, but that if your behaviour is radically different from that of everybody else, then you're going to see raised eyebrows and perhaps disapproving looks.